Since we last chatted with class of 2025 quarterback Bryce Baker, he has committed to the Tar Heels. So it's high time we had another conversation with the future UNC signal caller to check in on what his life has been like since he committed. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Thursday, August 17th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you for joining us on today's episode and making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or watch of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets back every time they win in the regular season. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to check it out. Coming up today, we are going to look at Bryce Baker's decision to commit to North Carolina, what his life's been like, what's been going on since then, and who he's trying to bring along with him to Chapel Hill. Also, I want to look at how prep is going for his upcoming season because this dude still has two more years of high school. Bryce is a great young man. If you missed our first conversation, go back and check it out. I'll link it above. But right now, let's get into today's Talk with Bryce Baker. Man, it's always great to have guests back on the show here on Locked on Tar Heels, and that's the case today as Bryce Baker joins us again. Although last time he joined us, he was not yet a Tar Heel, and now he is. Since we last talked, Bryce Baker, quarterback in the class of 2025, has committed to the Tar Heels. So Bryce, first off, welcome, and second, congratulations on making your commitment. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. Yeah, it's great to have you back. So many people loved your first conversation that we had on the show. And so uh, people have been clamoring to get you back on. So super glad you're here. Now, let's get right into that. We talked, it was June 9th. I looked uh, looked it up when we first talked. Then right after that, you were right around that time, you were at uh, North Carolina camp and then NC State camp, and then ultimately committed just a couple weeks later on June 27th. Um, what, What was the process for you of going ahead and making that decision when you did? So definitely um, I wanted to check all the boxes. I always say that of development, um, personal touch, and then just overall love I felt from that school. And people always say, you'll, you'll feel it. Um, you'll feel it once you're on campus and once you visit that college. But um, I didn't know what that meant at first, but honestly, um, the first time I went to UNC spring practice, I just felt it. And mm-hmm. I didn't really express that because, like I said, I didn't really know what that meant. Yep. But um, um, th- th- I definitely felt it the first time I stepped on UNC's campus and met the coaching staff. And at first, they weren't really recruiting me, but um, they went to my school and I met them. We had great conversations. I met with Coach Brown, Coach Lindsey, and just their genuine love. I always say that and their genuine just trust in me as a player and commitment to develop me um, that that hit home with me. So that checked all the boxes. I was actually able to talk to Drake May and we actually have a bond now. So that's always great to have um, somebody that's already there going through the process. So I loved all those aspects of it. And um, I continue to talk to Drake. And even before I committed, I asked them questions apart from the coaching staff to um, to just fill them out and feel how the coaches are, um, j- just their genuine um their their true colors, like I always say that. Apart from their um, apart from the coaching staff, but he checked all the boxes, and I want to go to commit because um, I just want to be decisive with it. Yeah, I love that, and I love you like the wisdom to say, let me go ahead and talk not just to the coaches because of course they're going to have certain things they say, right. but right. To, to to be able to talk to somebody that's literally playing the position at the school that you want to play at the same position. And so I, I want to get a little further into that. Let me ask about that conversation or the conversations you've had with Drake. Um, what, what have some of those things been like that you've, that you've asked him and, and the conversations you guys have had? So when I was at the Peyton Manning camp, I was able to talk to uh, Drake and his dad about coach Lindsay and how he develops, because mm-hmm. that was one of the last boxes I checked with um, North Carolina and, from UCF to to or, or Auburn Auburn first, then to UCF, um, and then to the Tar Heels. He he just he had proof of his development. He has um, guys in the NFL, and then I asked Drake specifically if you weren't where you're at, do you think Coach Lindsey and not just Coach Lindsey, but the coaching staff could 
take you to where you want to go? And he straight up said yes. So hmm. that was the main question I asked, and he he said yes. That's really neat. And it's cool that in talking to both Drake and his dad, you were talking to two Carolina quarterbacks <laughs> who have been through it. That's pretty uh, pretty cool lineage there. And I, I love their willingness to be open and honest with you because right. you're making – one of the most difficult and important decisions of your life. And you need that information. That's really cool. What is like, cause I think a lot of people after losing coach Longo off to Wisconsin have been wondering what they're going to get in chip Lindsay. I know a lot of the fan base is always asking me like, are, are we going to see the same things? What, what is he going to be like as a person? What, what have those interactions been like with coach Lindsay for you? So I've been able to talk about the offense with coach and it's going to be similar. Of course, he's going to, pour in some of the stuff that he has, um, the things that make him unique and um, just just change what he has towards or to the North Carolina terminology. So it, it's it should be pretty consistent, um, something to have the players to catch on easy. And then as far as a person, he's just a genuine, a genuine coach that um, is big on relationships. Um, that was his main point when he was talking to me that he won't change from the person that's recruiting me to when I'm on campus. He won't be two-faced to now that I'm on campus to try to act different. Um, he'll have that genuine love all the way through. So someone that's genuine, consistent, and ready to win. Yeah, man, that's really good. It, and that's encouraging to hear because you see these guys, and I know a lot of people wonder, like, is that who that really is? And it's always nice to know that they are who they say they really are. Yeah. And I, that's encouraging. Bryce, as you were thinking about making a decision, did you always know like, man, I'd really like to go ahead and commit before I get into my junior year of high school? Or was it just like, hey, I'm going to take this as long as it needs to to make the right decision, regardless of what that time frame is? Yeah, honestly, for me, um, I didn't rush the process because throughout the process, I learned so much going to different colleges, talking to different quarterback coaches, taking my iPad, writing down notes, <laughs> learning their offense, see how it fits with my offense. So I learned so much. I wasn't rushing it at all, but um, I just felt in my heart that I want to be decisive with it and not overthink things. And I feel like UNC was or is the place for me. And um, it, it really has a has a I, like I said, I, I didn't rush it. But um, yeah, UNC, once you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Once you know, you know. So. I love it. Bryce, here's a question. I I, you and I haven't talked about this, and, and you might not even be ready to answer this question yet, but are you thinking you're going to enroll early or are you going to stay all the way through the spring of your senior year and then uh, come in the, that summer of 25 at some point? So right now the plan is definitely to enroll early, and I'm taking all the right classes to do that, and I'm blessed with the, with the teachers at East Forsyth and my parents' guidance to, to be able to do that. So um, the goal is to uh, uh, enroll early. Love it. Love it. So we'll look ahead to that. And obviously things can change, but um, man, it's just to get those extra weeks and months in the system and be around the guys and the coaches. I know that's such a big win. Now we're sure. talking about what it's been like to commit. I'd love to ask you some things about what it's been like in the weeks and really just kind of the month and a half since you committed trying to figure out who Bryce Baker is now as he is a Tar Heel. We're going to get to that conversation in just a second. But first, today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, yeah, go ahead and do it. You can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl. I'm going with the Chiefs because they win it a lot, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on anything, spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, we're joined by Bryce Baker today on Locked on Tar Heels, quarterback commit for the Carolina in the class of 2025. And um, Bryce, what I want to talk about is what life's been like since you committed there back in late June. Um, just in general, what, 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 if anything, has been different in your life since that point? I say not much, honestly. Um, the recruitment's still there from other colleges, and um, I say my focus is more poured on to my season and and things I need to work on as a player and as a person more so than trying to decipher between schools because I feel like um, 
I'm, I'm a committed person and I don't I don't really want to switch up. So um, it's definitely my mindset has changed to be more focused on the season and and my family and just me trying to develop as a person. Yeah, I remember you said when you uh, posted on social media your commitment. I think you said two hundred percent committed. <laughs> and I don't know how you get above one hundred percent committed, but uh, that that says something to me. I think a lot of people are always curious what that's like. Like once you've committed, but then you still get other schools checking in. Like, hey, how firm is your commitment? You know, like, are, are you thinking you want to talk with us and and see? Like, how do you go about handling those conversations? Because that's got to be a little bit awkward. Yeah, it definitely is awkward, but I definitely mention UNC all the time to them and just let them know that UNC is number one for me right now. And I don't plan on changing or I don't plan on that changing. And um, I do express my thankfulness and, sure. and appreciation for them reaching out to me and believing in me as a person and player. But I definitely always mention UNC. And um, like I said, I, I just express my thankfulness to them. That's neat. Now, as you've gone from recruit to verbal commit, what have the conversations with the coaching staff been like with coach Brown, with coach Lindsay uh, in terms of like things they want you to be working on or preparing for or doing throughout this last like year and a half of high school for you? Right. Definitely seizing my opportunities now and not thinking too far ahead because mm -hmm. nothing's um, set in stone yet really for me. I still have to prove myself and this season is going to be big for me, but um, I don't mind the pressure honestly, because I know that's what comes with this. So um, I'm going to continue to just, um, try to dominate all the opportunities I have this season, um, grow as a player throughout this season, grow closer to my friends, and and just develop, honestly, um, the best I can. Yeah, I, man. And that, like, as, as you think about doing that, you talked about, like, being close to your friends and stuff like that. I know a lot of people, it's like, once you just go from Bryce Baker high school kid to Bryce Baker North Carolina football commit, like, sometimes – people start changing right around you yeah. and, and wanting to get a, like, so how do you maintain some level of normalcy with your friend group and some of that? Um, I, I make sure I stay around or I keep my circle tight. And a lot of people say that, but for me, that means to just um, stay around and keep in contact with the people that have been there um, before all the hype around my name and people that still want to, or the people that just express their, um, they, they just express their uh, support, I say, mm -hmm. for me and their genuine support. And you can feel it, honestly. Um, it's not new people that really come in and start hanging around with me or, or start texting me that I respond to quicker, I say. Um, it's more so the people that I've been around or been talking to since day one. Now that that comes with um, – it, it comes with um, different things. Like for me, that's not – that's not cutting off people that haven't been with me from the start because yeah. there are new people that will come in my life and still have genuine support, but um, you can still, you can still just, just feel it when they're, when they're genuine or, or when they want something out of you. Yeah, man, I feel that's gotta be so tough. And that's something I wouldn't want on my own shoulders or my kids. And so, man, just thinking of you as you go about the process of uh, working through all that and, and being wise and, and shrewd about who you surround yourself with, man, and, and just proud of you for taking those steps. That's really neat. Uh, like you, I want to go back to talk, like you talked about the connections you've already made with Drake May and some of the ongoing conversations you guys have had. Have you been able to connect with any of the other guys that are either like on the team right now or maybe our class of 2024 commits or anything like that? Um, so I'll start with the team. Um, I do know Javar Ritchie, and he's he's a guy that I've been talking to since um, growing up running track, um, nine or ten years old. Uh, well, when I was nine, he was older, of course, but um, I always keep in contact with him, and he was a big part of my uh, decision making on UNC. I asked him more so about the campus life and how people are on campus, how the teachers um, their commit to players, and how people act um, towards the players. So. Um, I keep in contact with Javari and then the 24 commits. Um, uh, Al Look, the, the people that you know, uh, Alex, Jordan Ship, and then yep. Keenan, I, I keep in contact with them. And we're <laughs> actually at UNC. Smart man getting in contact with those receivers. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we're at UNC recently talking, and um, we have a great bond already and plan to continue to grow it. That's cool. I, I, like, is there anybody – and 
you know, you can name names or not. Is are there yeah. any other recruits in the class of 25 that you you're really working on? Like, man, you got to come be with me. Like maybe an offensive lineman who are like, dude, I need you blocking for me or uh, other receivers. Like, dude, we could team up and just, I'll drop dimes to you all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So honestly, um, only two people so far and I plan to um, make, make that a bigger number, but um, big Dave out of, Providence Day, he, he's yeah. a big guy that we want. and He is a um, big guy. That is true. Yeah, and that we <laughs> trust in. So um, definitely I, I keep in contact with Dave and then Shamaris Peterkin. I call him Snook. And I grew up playing basketball with them. So oh, nice. Um, hopefully we can continue to grow our bond and that he he gets to trust in me, to trust me that UNC is the place and that he himself goes out and, and develop his relationships with the coaches at UNC. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully you'll hear about them soon. But um, but those are two people I'm working on right now. All right. Bryce Baker doing work as a recruiter now that he is in the fold with the Tar Heels. You love to hear that. Now, we want to change our attention. As Bryce said, we're, we don't want to look too far ahead. We got to live in the moment. So I want to talk some about Bryce's transition to a new school, this uh, football season upcoming and what he's looking forward to. We're going to have that conversation in just a second. We're talking today with Bryce Baker, Carolina quarterback commit in the class of 2025. So far, we've been talking about the North Carolina side of things, but man, we got to live in the moment too. So we're going to turn our attention back on that t-shirt that Bryce is wearing right now, East Forsyth, his new high school that he is playing for this year, his junior season. So uh, Bryce, I just want to start there. Last time we talked a little bit about it, but now we're getting a little further into it. How, how is the transition going, going to a new school? Uh, acclimating nope, okay. to new friends and new teammates and a new coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the word I always use is smooth. It's been smooth for me because um, my work work ethic um, truly is it really has really helped me um, throughout the process of learning the new plays, getting acclimated with the new team and mm -hmm. teammates, growing my leadership, establishing that leadership and just just being a voice on the team, um, being a team leader. So that paired with the coaches' genuine love to continue to grow the team mentally and physically and their their sacrifices they put in each and every day to to truly make progress on the team is definitely putting that together um, makes it smooth. I love that. Any uh, Anybody giving you a hard time for being the new guy, like shaving cream in your locker or anything like that? Honestly, no, because all, all my teammates are um, people that I grew up playing with um, since AYF, and that's our league through middle school. Gotcha. And so I grew up playing with them and, and all the guys. We have a close bond already, so it's been smooth. Plus, uh, all the skill guys know, like, if I want Bryce to throw me the ball, I got to be good to him, right? So. There you go. <laughs> that's awesome. So um, you you talked about learning new plays. How How difficult has that transition been, like, how, how similar or dissimilar is, is the playbook and scheme and, and other things that you're doing? So the main difference is um, our tempo this year. <laughs> um, we're, we're a faster team that moves faster, that gets the plays um, off faster. Um, and that, that comes with me have to know, having to know my reads, um, getting through my progression, and, and just being quicker overall with my communication to my team. And um, so, so that's the biggest um, difference. And then as far as the playbook, um, of course, there's there's plays that are similar throughout, but um, our playbook this year is it's similar. Um, yeah, I say it's similar. Cool, man. That's great. Yeah, uh, I have visions. Have you ever seen the movie Cool Runnings about the I Jamaican bobsled team? No, I the, haven't. The guy that's the driver, he go like everyone else is going out, and he's just sitting in his room studying all the cur the turns and the curves yeah. on the yeah. track. And I just have visions of you doing that, sitting in bed at night, just. <laughs> going through the playbook and looking at it all, yeah. <laughs> getting ready. That's good. Well, how is prep going? How's practices been? What are you guys getting into uh, right now? As, as we're, you know, we're talking this, this episode is going to air on August 17th, but we're talking on August 9th. So about a, a week before this drops, but what's going on right now in y'all's preparation? Okay. So um, we're preparing Friday for our scrimmage um, against Reedsville. And that'll be a tough team because, um, we know what they have and we know what they can do. So that'll be a great challenge for us. But we're looking for challenges right now to push us mentally and physically to where we want to go. We have a collective goal of um, a state championship. So that takes a lot um, mentally that we have to we have to be um, unified as a team and mm -hmm. continue to strive to let no one outwork us and accept the challenges and take on adversity and just learn from it. So we'll definitely um, 
we're definitely seize the opportunity, seize the moment, and just show what we have. So, well, that that's one thing. And then I say, um, just overall season. Um, our season will start next week, um, okay. and then that'll be next Friday, and it will start off with Heritage, and that'll be a start of our journey. Okay. Man, excited to track along with that and, and see how that goes. Bryce, you talking about something that clicked in my mind, just talking there about the destination. We're all in on this together. Thinking about your leadership style, would you call yourself more of a leader by example or more of a vocal leader? Um, a leader by example that's growing into the vocal role. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so this year I'm taking on a way more um, uh, role of being more vocal and I've been able to, I say my transition with that has been, has been great because uh, my teammates believe in me. I believe in my teammates and we just have each other's backs. Cool. That's great. So, uh, you know, I know you're feeling super solid about the football side of things. You said you got your first game coming up, but man, it's different when you step into the halls of a new high school for the first time. How, how are you feeling about the first day of school? I'm feeling great. Um, <laughs> so this is my hometown school. So I know most of the people around and, Kernersville is is a is a town where everybody knows everybody. So hopefully it's a it's a it's a great experience for us to continue to um there we go. And continue to just have just have a great friendship overall because like I said, the people I the people I'm going into high school with, I've been in middle school with, I've been in elementary school with. So now it's just a new state of our lives and we'll just we'll just grow together. So it should be smooth. And it, plus, beyond that, if I remember correctly from what you've told me, you'll actually have played a game or two by the time you hit the first day of school. So you're already kind of going to be in with everybody at that point. <laughs> yes, sir. And we Hopefully. have a great um, we have a great student section and a great um, fan base around our school. So that's always fun to have. Good, good. And hopefully you'll have a couple W's under your belt when you step into the first day of school. Uh, yes, sir, that always makes good. people a little more happy. <laughs> yes, sir. Awesome. Bryce, it's so great to talk to you again. So good to catch up. Uh, we'll have to keep tabs on how the season's going and, and getting into the school year. Uh, man, best of luck to you guys. Stay healthy and yes, stay sir. together as a team. And good luck with that goal of that state championship. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Huge thanks once again to Bryce Baker for joining us. Just a delight to talk to you. I really hope you enjoyed today's conversation. You can go follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow me at Isaac Shade, and obviously make sure you follow Bryce as well. If you would, go leave us a review. Five stars on Apple Podcasts or anywhere else you can leave reviews. We'd love to know why you enjoy our show. You can email the show at LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Last chance to get in questions for tomorrow's mailbag episode. Also, don't forget to subscribe on both audio and video formats. For those of you watching, smash the like button so we know you're here. And we'd love to hear your comments on today's episode with Bryce. As always, it's a great day to be a Tar Heel, especially this day. We'll be back on tomorrow's show again with that mailbag episode. Make sure you tune in for that. You everydayers out there, we know you'll be back with us. But until then... Peace.